Alrighty, now I'm gonna get out of here. We are ready to move to how to communicate with your teacher. So I am going to, oh, and we have another um, 2E ADHD. He kind of works with all gamuts of, of people that are neurodivergent in terms of how to help, how to promote, how to advocate. We really try to, again, give you a well-rounded, and this in this section, we're gonna be talking about uh, communicating with your teachers. So very, very happy to have Sean here. Sean Cormick is who we have next. Sean, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this business. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, thank you, Colby. Really excited to be here. And I just love how many people are here learning. That's that's really exciting. It's 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 fun to to be uh, with a live audience and, and kind of get your feedback and questions as we go. So yeah, my name is Sean McCormick. I am an executive function coach. I'm the founder of Executive Function Specialist, which is an online coaching company that helps middle, high school, and college students learn how to overcome procrastination, disorganization, time management challenges so they feel empowered and motivated. And I got started in this because I was a former public school special ed teacher, and uh, I really focused on working, kid, working with kids with ADHD, autism, and emotional disturbance. Those are their disability categories. And I just realized the thing that I was, I love doing that they like doing with me was helping them get organized, learn how to communicate their needs, follow through on things, track their progress. And, and I just started going out and doing that directly with students and their families. And um, it turns out there's a lot of people who want help with that. And it's something I'm passionate about. So it was a great, I call it the Iki guy. It's like the intersection of what you love doing with what the world needs and all that. And that's kind of my my uh, zone of genius or my the place I like to be is working on executive function skills. Uh, so question, I, I think, think this is going to be more of a question and it's kind of my question. That yeah. I, what is the most often problem or, or strategy that people want help with when you go into IEP meetings? What is, is there a common thread you hear often in IEP meetings? And again, I'm talking about your population, so older kids. Um, and how can we help the teacher communicate with the, the a child that is struggling with executive functioning? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, what comes up, I mean, so from my perspective, since my the majority of my clients have ADHD and if you know about IEPs, you know that ADHD does not fall under one of the 13 categories of disability. So it means that a lot of parents who have kids who really, really struggle with ADHD are often denied an IEP or a 504 plan. And oftentimes those kids with ADHD are seen as lazy or they're seen as distractible or they're seen as not caring when really they have a dopamine deficiency and they have a hard time paying attention to a lecture on the civil war and they need strategies for engaging in school and they need support they don't need uh con you know someone condemning their their learning style so that is actually the biggest issue i see is that kids don't know how to ask for help so they need to learn, they need to learn how strategies to ask for help and oftentimes trying to vocally ask for help is fraught with a lot of anxiety so i found that giving kids communication templates and teaching them how to email their teachers reduce the anxiety of that in-person interaction and gives them a voice that they often have not had in the classroom where they feel relegated to the corner metaphorically but also actually at times and so uh, it's a really empowering experience for them to to kind of give them templates for communication that they can modify and and write their their ideas into reality um, so that's, that's what I've found to be the biggest issue is that lack of understanding because ADHD ends up falling in either specific learning disability or other health impairment or emotional disturbance. So it's kind of the redheaded stepchild of the IEP process. And so I've really been focused on helping families and students learn how to advocate for their own needs. And where do you begin with that? So advocating for your own needs, one of the questions that literally just popped up was how can you, what do you, how do you help a kid that's given up? So in my opinion, that word is motivation. How do you motivate a kid that doesn't want to do what has been asked of them? Or um, even an adult, you know, like you said, even college that really 
I have, I have a client that often thinks word it work is dumb. It is this is the dumbest assignment. I think it's just so dumb, and they, they just don't find purpose in it. And we with ADHD, we need a purpose, right? We yeah. want to to we have our own idea of how things should be going. That's what we want to work on. So yeah. that's kind of a question. How can you help a kid that doesn't want? to be, you know, that seems to be unmotivated, that seems to be all of those things, again, labels. So I'm sorry that I'm, I'm using those, everyone out there. But again, as Stephanie put in the, in the chat, they, we are often perceived as lazy and unmotivated. But mm -hmm. put, put me in front of a, a thing to organize and you will see that I am not lazy. But if you're talking about something I don't want to listen to, hell yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean... <clears throat> Okay, well, here's a big, here's a cheat code for all you teachers and parents out there is, you know, I talk about the order of operations in coaching, and it's really basic human interaction, especially for kids with ADHD, and it's PEMDAS, and that'll make it easy for you to remember. The P stands for prioritize a secure connection. So you can never walk into a situation with a kid with ADHD, or even an adult, and really with anyone and just expect that you're just going to like dump information or demands on them and they're going to somehow respond you know they may they may respond but it might not be the response you like so when you prioritize a secure connection you're telling them you are important regardless of what you can give to me or what I can make you do and you open the pathway for authentic communication so i'll give you an example um the first thing I do oftentimes with a student, or if there's a student who's resistant or doesn't, you know, want to move forward, is like, I don't want to do this. I ask them, I say, what's the cheat code for working effectively with you? And I just go quiet. And when you ask someone to tell you what's going to help them work effectively with you, they'll tell you. And just because, excuse me, just because you ask them that question, they're going to be so much more open to working with you. So that's where I would start. <laughs> if you're, I got really excited about that there. Um, that's where I would start <laughs> is ask someone that question and watch what happens because you will open the door to them feeling connected and valued um, and you'll get a lot more out of them. Agreed. I, I have to co totally agree with that. And so I... Once, so once, once we're there, right, once we yeah. have talked to them and we kind of find out what, what can we do to talk to the teacher to motivate the kid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of teachers are, there's a lot of teachers out there. I'm a former teacher. Um, there's a lot of teachers out there who are flexible to change and will take that article you send them from attitude and do something with it. But there's a lot of teachers out there who just don't care what you think as a parent. And I don't mean to be that to be rude, but it's just the reality is that they're working with 130 families and, you know, you're just one other person in their life who needs something and is demanding something. Because let's, let's be real. Teacher is a, teaching is a burnout profession. It is hard work. So you don't get paid enough for all your teachers out there. There's, yeah, there's. And, but you know what, there might, there, there's oftentimes great teachers out there. So it's not, it's not to oh, say yeah. that you can't have the experience, but you can't depend on it to make sure your kid gets their needs met, you know, or the kid learns how to advocate for themselves. And there are times when you have to step in and bring administration in the picture. But the first tier of intervention is teaching a child how to communicate their needs and seeing if the teacher will be responsive to that. So what I recommend do recommend you do is help them learn how to do that. Is it okay if I share my screen for a second? Please. Okay. So check this out. I'm going to show you what I do. So um, can we see my, my homepage? Can everyone see it? Yes. So, okay. So if you go to executive function skills, self-advocacy, I'm going to take you here. And oops. Um, okay. So this article, I have how to communicate with your teachers. You need to ping them. So I want to walk you through what you could do with a student. So let's say you have a kid who has D's and F's and they're not getting their work done. So the first thing I do with a kid like that is I say, hey, I see these, you know, after we connect, I say, I see your grades are D's and F's. Um, I want to ask you a question. What grades do you want in your classes by the end of the semester? 
And usually in most circumstances, they'll say, oh, well, I want A's and B's. And I say, okay, can you write that down on Google Tasks? So I have them go over to Tasks. Now, 60% of classrooms in America use the Gmail suite. So pretty much all kids have access to Google Tasks. So I'm going to give you an example of that. They open this little task task thing up and they write, they write down their goals, right? So I just have them write down their goals. You know, put the grade you want in these classes. So then the next step, so I'm like, okay, now that we know what grade you want in these classes, let's figure out what you need to do to get that, earn that grade. So we, we go through and we identify their, uh, what, what assignments they need to do. I'm going to give you an example here. Let's see here if I have, if I have one. Um, this kid, he wanted to earn an A on his history test, right? So he had to ask the teacher for extended time, sign up for time to take the test. And so those were the steps, right? Now, unfortunately, what happens is a lot of kids think they know what to do, but they don't act actually know what to do. So here's what, here's what they need to do. As I say, okay, let's ask your teacher if what you're planning on doing is gonna get you the grade you want. So now I've done this a thousand times with a thousand different students. So every time we've gone through a situation where, for example, we need to, and let me zoom in here so you can see, where we needed to go ask a teacher for guidance on preparing for the exam, for example, or whatever it might be. You can go here and I have them take this template that we wrote together, like, hi teacher, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for sharing that I get, could get closer to my goal of re get, earning a better grade on the upcoming exam. I've been taking the following actions to prepare for your exam. They write out what they're doing. Maybe I'm doing a study guide. I'm doing this, this, this. Is there anything else you recommend I do to most effectively prepare for your exam? Thank you for your guidance. So I have them take this, they copy that, and then they go over to their email, make a new email, and I have them put it in there. They put the teacher's name. They say, you know, preparing for exam. They fill in the blanks. And now what I have them do, which saves them tons of time over the rest of their life, is they click on these three dots, they go to templates. Love that. And then they save it as a template, okay? So now anytime they wanna do something like this, if they need to communicate a need for their teacher, they just go back to these three dots. For example, they could go here, let's say meeting my goal. You know, I noticed my grade in your class is currently a blank. I wanna send a reminder that I turned in this assignment <laughs> and here are my grades on these assignments. Can I make these up as my goal is to earn a blank in your class? So this is just a process you go through. And the more kids do this, the more positive feedback they get from their teachers. Their teachers start saying, wow, Timmy right. advocates for himself. He makes it work. And I'll tell you, as a former classroom teacher, if there's a kid that was doing this, if they were reaching out, advocating, they always got a better grade in my class, no matter what. That was like that participation grade went up to 100%. <laughs> because I was like, all right, this kid, this kid clearly cares about right. being successful in this class. I love that. And my sister is a high school physics teacher. And so she, Leah, her name's Leah. Leah would love that. Oh my gosh. If you wrote, re reached out to her and no one does really, what she gets is emails from parents telling her how terrible she is and how she didn't keep her kid on task. And what is she going to do to make sure that Joey gets his uh, assignments turned in uh, on, uh, bleh, bleh, that he gets his assignments turned in on time. So to switch that and give them the self-advocacy where you really, you know, you're just going to take my little template and cut and copy it and put mm -hmm. it in there and fill in your words. Amen. Can I just say amen to that? Just because. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, uh, because and what I want, number one, so our kids have to problem initiating. <laughs> you just initiated the task for them. All they have to do is fill in the blank. Right. Oh, I'm not even it's, kidding. It's like taking, okay. So it's like taking the mentality of an adult who's learned through trial and error and challenging adverse experiences, right. this is the steps you have to take. Because here's the thing, let's actually dissect it because I want you to, I want people to understand it even on a granular level in a way so you can make sense of this. So check, check this out, I'm gonna reshare real quick and talk to you about what is actually happening here. So when you send an email like this, right? And I call it the ping method because you've got to ping your teachers, right? And the ping method stands for P, Pleasant introduction. Hi, I hope you're doing well. Automatically, you've lowered the effective filter of that, that adult who's been getting screamed at by parents and administration, and they're tired and frustrated, and they're thinking about going and working at Starbucks or something or doing a different career because they are just fed up with trying to please 
parents, right? So you're, you're already lowering that effective filter by yep. starting the pleasant introduction. And then you go into the I, which is inquire um, about your needs. Hey, I'm preparing for the end of the semester. I want to make sure I plan effectively. Would you let me know if there's any large projects or exams I can be working on now? So now you're inquiring, right? You're not coming and saying, you need to give me a better grade. And I always tell kids, don't write, I want to get an A, right? I want to earn an A because no teacher is going to give you anything. You've got to earn it, right? Now the N in ping stands for negotiate. Uh, you know, additionally, could you direct me to any resources? And there's not really a negotiating happening in there one, but let me go to you. Let me go to a different example here. Um, here's one. Okay, I'm going to turn these assignments in. Would it be okay if I turned in the assignment names three and four by proposed date? So I have them executively decide what they're going to turn in and by when, and then pitch it to their teachers, right? So now they've pleasant introduction, inquired and informed the teacher, negotiated, and then you get you catch more flies with honey than vinegar, right? So you got to end with that. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely. If you, those, all those steps, that's good communication. But a lot of kids, they think writing an email means putting in the subject line, can I turn this in? And then nothing in the body, right? That's not good communication. And you're not going to really get what you want because, I mean, you might get what you want, but you have less of a, less of a realistic chance. And, and my thing is, is for all of our adults that have ADHD that are here, what a great template to use for boss, boss man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean, yo, boss man. I you, am. This is coming in late. How can I get it on time? How can I do better? So I think that and and parents to your little kids, you, that would have been your email. Oh, Joey's really struggling in reading. Uh, this is what's happening. So for uh, well, I can tell my own story. I had to do this the other day for my daughter. But yes, the the idea of going in, telling them the positives, the pleasant introduction, inquiring about your needs, negotiating. In all reality, you just negotiated your way right right into something different. Because mm -hmm. most likely, the, all the teachers that well, all the good teachers, and you know, I say that with a grain of salt, would would hear that and a, a probably reply in a positive manner. And if they don't, you have a record showing the kid made a good faith attempt in a socially acceptable manner to problem solve individually. And then if they don't respond, then the child forwards it to their parent and says, hey, I haven't got a response. Can you please step in? So it's a tiered system mm -hmm. for addressing you know, academic challenges. And the other thing you have to remember is that teachers are allergic to parents. And what I mean by that is if a parent is stepping in and trying to bulldoze an issue for a student, that teacher is going to put their feet down. And actually in their mind, they're protecting the kid from this parent who is limiting their child from being exposed to challenging experiences. So the teacher, the teachers are in the break room saying, oh, this parent tried to do everything for their kid, but I stopped it because I really care about the kid, right? So if you really want to help your kid, you know, don't bulldoze their issues, equip them with the advocacy skills they need to, you know, problem solve on their own. Yes, I, I think this is just so needed in terms of what to say to a teacher. I just thought those were fantastic examples. Okay, so let's move slightly out of the classroom because we're still talking about work and getting things done within the classroom. How can parents at home, so now we know kind of what to do, how can they kind of structure it to where we can get the work that you're talking about in terms of what can the kids do at home to be prepared? What are the, what can we set in place to set them up for success? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you, are you talking about like in terms of managing school or just better communication skills or? Well, both of the above. You can, can you answer both? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So what do, you know, I work with so many parents. I could, what do the parents do that their kids are, you know, what are the common threads? So I think well, parents, parents are naggers. We nag. Right? We're naggers. We nag. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, definitely don't nag. So, I mean, it goes back to that, that P in PEMDAS prioritize a secure connection because, you know, the parents who are unsuccessful are the ones who are overly focused on outcomes. They're like, you need to get an A, you need to go to Harvard, this, that, and the third, right? But the parents whose kids turn out all right and whose kids don't feel, you know, the pressure of the world, they're the ones who focus on the process, right? Who value the process. Like, okay, you know, maybe today you didn't do this, 
but we're going to work on this so that over time we're shaping your behavior, right? So, so one thing you can do as a parent is, and I do this with my kids, is focus on what's known as declarative language. And declarative language is where you're, you're modeling your thinking in front of them, right? So if I'm finishing up dinner with, with my kids and my wife, I'm like, oh, okay, I got I to gotta knock the dishes out. You know, we got to get bath time started. I'm kind of walking them through my thinking. So they're sitting there and they're thinking, oh, how can I help dad, right? I'm not saying you need to do the dishes. You need to take a bath right? I'm, I'm walking them, I'm modeling my thinking so that they have an opportunity to participate in the process that we're going through, right? And that's what kids don't have. They, they get a lot of imperative language, meaning people are telling them what to do, but that doesn't strengthen their executive function skills. When they have an opportunity to executively commit, um, they're going to be, they're going to be more aware and in tune with what's going on. So an easy way to do this, I do this with my kids all the time, is if my, my mom, their grandma is pulling up to the house. I'll say out loud, I'll say, oh, I see grandma outside. So instead of telling them, go run up and hug your grandma, they, they hear me say that and they're like, oh, and they run to the door, they wave, you know what I mean? They're all excited. I'm not telling them what to do. I'm just modeling my thinking. Now, this is a slow process. It's not going to change their behavior overnight. But if you get in the, in the, the process of modeling your thinking, of being vulnerable, right? Oh, I'm feeling sad that you, you're missing your assignments. Oh, I'll fix it. I'll go turn it right now, right? Instead of saying, you're missing your assignments. You're a disappointment to me and your mother. You know, that's that's just not gonna help them. So I think I think trying to model and be vulnerable about your feelings, your thinking, that's, that's how you really get the most uh, mileage out of your kids. Going back into the classroom, is mm -hmm. there something that you have found that teachers can do or get to do in their classroom? Like I often ask teachers, can you please consistently put the assignments that are due here and the assignments that are coming here? Is there things that you use ask teachers to do often to help our kids that don't see the whole picture that don't you know what I mean that, yeah. that have executive functioning time management all of that is there things that the teacher can set up in the uh, surroundings that help the kid succeed yeah for sure great question so first off teachers you need to put due dates on your assignments and not just put them on google classroom <laughs> that's one thing that I is really confusing for kids with executive function challenges is you got to take a basic skills course in how to use Google Classroom or Canva. There's plenty of tutorial, tutorials online or ask your administration for help if you don't understand how to do it. But you got to put due dates with times and you have to put clear directions as well as rubrics for success. Because if kids don't know what success looks like and they don't have a way to measure it, there's no way to help them meet that expectation. So you know, try to be as clear as possible about what success looks like. Like, think about this phrase. I will know I have earned an A when, what would you put as the, <laughs> the completion of that sentence? So clear due dates, you know, times that things are due, ways, how do they get help? If you are struggling with this assignment, here's what you can do, right? Put, put options for them. And then of course, um, be flexible, right? Like you're a teacher at the end of the day, you know, is a kid going to remember that <laughs> they're going to remember whether you were mean or nice to them and how you made them feel. So if you need to be a little flexible and to create an opportunity, like I would have kids who just could not do certain assignments for my class. So I was like, okay, well, the goal is to teach you how to, you know, create a narrative and, you know, communicate that to the class. How do you want to do it? Like give them an opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge in a different way. And you'll be amazed uh, what certain kids can do if you give them an alternative pathway to meeting the expectations of your class. Now, of course, you don't have to do that for everybody, but 70 to 80% of the kids in your class are probably just going to follow directions and do what you ask. But that small 10 to 20%, you're going to need to probably just give them a little more flexibility and, and you know, focus on progress, not perfection. So that's what I would recommend. Well, I think these are all fantastic recommendations. And I even love the idea of how you said, how do I know I got an A on this assignment when, or how do I got an A in this class? How do you yeah. know that in, in your own home, parents, how do you, I know my room is clean? How mm -hmm. do I know? 
You know, maybe those are questions that you can even help your kids with because I have to work on that in my own home. How do I know the dog's poop is all picked up? When I go outside and I walk around, I don't see any, you know, again, so there's lots of different ways and strategies that we can use that one sentence right there that really helps set the bar for this is how you win, kids. This is how you win. Mm -hmm. And so this is where the bar is. If, if you want to succeed, this is what it is. And again, there's different levels of succeeding, right? I, I got low grades in high school. So my parents were like, Whoa! when I came home with a C, you know? So again, succeeding isn't a pluses and perfectness in every area of the life. So I, I love that. All right, Mr. Sean, tell us where, what is your free gift? How do we find you? Yes, yes. Okay, gifts for all. So let's see here. I'm going to share, I'm going to share with you right now. Let me pull it up. Um, so I'm going to give you all my templates because I think these are like the best things ever. Oh, <laughs> so I'll just so my, make sure that I'm doing Hold on, let me, let me mute. Sorry, no let me. worries. So, so these are all the templates and there's a video on how to set up that, um, those templates on Gmail. You have to change your settings just a little bit to enable templates. And there's a helpful article right here, plus all these templates, including Ones for parents on how to schedule a 504 IEP meeting, requesting an update this is on huge. IEP goal progress. Yeah. So what you can do is you go to my resources page, want our most popular executive function resources. So if it helps, I can just drop that into the chat. Um, it looks like you might've already put that in there. Okay. So, yeah. but just in case I'll, I'll drop it in there. Um, and honestly, uh, it, you know, that if you find that helpful, Definitely check out these other articles I've written on special ed and executive function skills because there's templates and tools. And I just try to put things out there that people have asked for and want um, so they can they can get it done. Whoop, whoop. That's all I can say. I love thank that. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for being here. We I learned a lot. I got lots of notes. I think that the whole ping idea is fantastic. So steal those and and you know use them for more than just this. Because like I said, you can you can use them for so many different ways. It's just learning to advocate for yourself, you know, in terms of friendships. You know, I'm just thinking about, you know, especially girls, you know, what is a good friend to you? What does that look like? I just mm -hmm. think there's so many ways to use the information you gave us. Thank you so much, Sean. I yeah, really thank, thank you for inviting me. This has been awesome. Thanks everybody for listening. And uh, if you have anything I, I can help with, my contact information is on the website that I shared and my social media is executive funk, Sean, I'll, I'll drop it in the chat uh, so you can check it out. Appreciate that. Wonderful. So helpful. Love that.